Good. Mate, have one of your best. Hey. Hey. The great cricketer is a Twitter stream. It's about playing crickets at the grade level. Boys! Get a few today, did you? To be honest with you, I um, hate grade cricket. <laughs> uh, I went into to play for a team called um, oh, the Lemus Kid. Obviously, sharing is always a big issue, a big issue for, for young kids coming into a senior cricket team. It's taken like a whip league. It's um, a bit of advice for the players yeah. for the one. I refer to the great cricketer here and I'll say, this will do a little bit early. <laughs> gold, 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 gold for Australia! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Great Cricketer Podcast. On today's show, we're talking England, India. Ben Stokes is out for that entire series. Australia, the weird build-up between the Ashes. Will it happen? Won't it happen? Little secret, it's going to happen. Shane Warne's got COVID. Not sure you've seen that. India, are they good at T20s? I don't know. Probably not. Nick Maddinson is in the show. Mm. He's in the show. Or well, before we get to hashtag RCDC, where we're getting into some areas with Nick. I do hope. I do hope indeed. This episode, as they all are, are brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. You can, use, you can use the code CHAMP for free custom design at budgiesmuggler.com. My name is Ian Higgins. Sam Perry is he pairs gold, gold, gold. Indeed. Gold. Indeed. What's your thirst level for gold? Have you, have you, have you been quenched? Has your thirst been quenched with gold? No, it's like uh, Pringles, you know. I fucking, like gold begats gold. For yes, me, really, yes, yes. There's no point where I go. That's enough. Now, the other day, mm. that's different to that's different to gold bigots gold, isn't what's it? What's that? Uh, it's just some bigotry stuff, right? <laughs> um, and not to be confused with fool's gold. Yes. chasing. Yes. Anyway, that's a Matthew, looking? That's Matthew, Matthew McConaughey movie. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I, and this is probably the best part. Of the Olympics and the experience of well, I'll our be the country. Arbiter of that. Yes, well, I'm going to tell you objectively what the best part is. <laughs> Hell of a start. Uh, I couldn't keep up with the amount of gold. Yeah, I had child, I had child responsibilities and whatever. You did. You did. I, I, I step away from the TV and from the from the phone for five minutes, for, for five minutes ten minutes. Yeah. The fucking WhatsApp thread's blowing up. More gold. <laughs> you don't even know what channel to put it onto. Where do I go to just see that colour glinting into my face? Mm-hmm. Thank you to the Australian Olympic team, especially the aquatic-based ones. Yes, exactly. The water-based athletes. Yes. For what and specifically they the female-based water athletes. Indeed. Just yes. to, yeah. Where are they? The based in water. The female-based water aquatic athletes. Nothing better than water sitting aquatic. on the... Water <laughs> aquatic. The life aquatic, not to be confused. Uh, so many sitting people Sitting on confused. the couch with my three-year-old son. Yeah. Arm around him. He wants yeah. to get off the couch, but I'm gripping him close. Because yeah, yeah. we're when What you watch. Having, yeah. Let, let the boy watch. <laughs> I, I was born in 1985. He's three, so this is the equivalent of this Seoul Olympics yeah. that I have no memory of. And yet, Neither. I'm gripping him close. He just wants to watch Octonauts. So, no. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, I'm trying to appraise my wife mm-hmm. of the record that Emma McKeon's going for. Right. Uh, and then you get into it, it's like, oh, it's nine middle. She's about to get 10, which actually, actually equal this. And mm. if she goes to 11, then she's mm. going to be uh, on, on song with the mm-hmm. Soviet Union uh, female athlete from 1952. I don't know her name and mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, but Smith, they had, I think it was. But they had fewer events back then. Yeah. It's getting into real winter equinox real stuff. Real winter equinox stuff, yeah. With the records. And that was on a Wednesday a, through a Thursday, and so that was different right. back then because of the tidal exact, situation the, exactly. with the Saturn moon. In, indeed, and also mm. the emerging Cold War, but... <laughs> But yes. I'm trying to put it in context for her going like, you know how like... Can you Seuss- put it to me in grade terms? Well, <laughs> fuck, fuck, I had a, had a day out. <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. day out. I have day McKean out. McKean had a day yeah. out, yeah. You know, like we grew up thinking that Susie O'Neill and Sam Riley were mm-hmm. like the doyens. Mm-hmm. This, this shit's on that with yeah. respect to them. Yes. It's not a very respectful phrase. Very disrespectful yeah. with the greatest of, of respect. respect. <laughs> now that I've said that. Yeah, that's right. So mm. you've asked me. And yes, uh, and and what can I can I say in return? Because I know you've been uh, haven't actually caught much of it. If I'm honest, yeah, mate, you haven't been, caught much of it. You've been feasting on gold, mate. I've and been. And you had a big night on Friday night. Yeah, Twitter wise. Yes, and then mm. I so what I like to do is like to drink and tweet. Don't and if, we all? And if you end a couple anything, it's either that or night swimming. Mm. Alcohol and night swimming, the perfect combination, as Lenny once said in The Simpsons. Um, yeah, mate. Just uh, it's. It, I don't know. It fills me with a childlike exuberance that you can't really feel anything else. And like you, you put this nicely on Twitter. I thought yesterday is that like okay. this this surprise. Like this came out of nowhere for me, and that is actually our athletes' problem. It's actually got nothing to do with mm. me and my observations of these events and these sports. 
as a whole. Indeed. This is their problem. Yeah. And so when it's a surprise win, it's like, oh, now I feel something. Now I feel patriotic. Now I'm thinking like, oh, that Chinese vessel, the, the, the northern tip of Australia, they can get the fuck out of here. We've got McKean in the water. Yeah. You're starting, to, you're starting to put, you know, everyone's like, oh, you walk a little taller. Like, like I've always little taller, like, chest out a little further. It's funny, isn't it? Because, like, people have mentioned that, like, it has provided the nation, mm-hmm. many of which are in lockdown, no. with um, a morale boost. Yeah. Like, and I'm sure studies have been done on this. Yeah. Does that translate to mm. GDP somehow? Or does it just ah, feel somehow. good and you can just WhatsApp some somehow. shit? Somehow. Yeah. Maybe it, maybe it does. I think these booster vaccines are actually mostly morale. And good for internet reception. That's right. That's right. We're running on five. Hey, I got here. vaccinated the other day. How you oh, feeling? I got my first jab. I was, yeah. I was uh, like, I had chills for like one or two days, but it was mm, fine. Didn't multiply. You could say they were multiplying, mm-hmm. but I was not losing control. <laughs> <laughs> What's this show again? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, anyway, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, uh, gold is obviously it, it knocks you off your equilibrium. Hundred uh, percent. It's been good. It's been good to get them. Okay, so in the meantime, some other stuff's been going on. Yeah. No more important than this. Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to put up this image. I think a lot of people would have already seen this image, mm-hmm. but I'll put it up on YouTube. Um, there's a guy whose wife is giving birth in a hospital, and he's wearing his um, – I'm going to have to zoom in. Can here. I rephrase? Oh, oh, there's a woman giving birth in a hospital, and there's a guy. <laughs> Wait, what did I just say? Well, it's like there's a guy whose wife is giving birth as though, like, she's the second part of this. Sorry, right, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. There, I didn't phrase that correctly. Being, no, 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 it's like, like but there, it is funny. Like, that, He really has made it. He really has he made really it. He really has made it about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, of the many messages we've received, I'll just read one from Josh Laurie, who's on mm. Patreon. He says, I'm unlikely to be the only one to tag you in this, but here's the first 45 minutes of your next pod sorted. Okay, we'll You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, okay, just be yeah. careful. More levels to <laughs> more, more levels to explore than Burj Khalifa. Going from strength to strength lately, boys. Love it. Cheers, JL, not Langer. Um, that's very kind of you. Thanks, Josh. Uh, so, yeah, so then do you want to describe the, the scene? Describe the scene for me, please, Sam. I think a lot of people will have seen this, but there's a, um, there's, uh, a woman giving birth in what appears to be a very, um, like a standard hospital a sanitary ward. situation, yeah. Um, well, she's room. she's, 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 she's actually well. in the standard birthing position as well. So it doesn't always work like that. I'll, I'll give you the tip. But um, <laughs> didn't expect to say okay. that. That's come straight on <laughs> my head. Okay. Um, also, now that I look at it again, like there's tip. far less carnage than what I um, – anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I look at it, yeah, yeah. it's very now clean. Let's deep dive it, yeah. Yeah, what's this? What's this? Is this a is this is this set up post? Might be a setup anyway. Um anyway, there's a woman about to give birth. Yes. There don't appear to be any doctors or midwives in the mm. room either. Hmm. Yeah. There's uh, a, there's a photographer. This is a fake. Yeah. Uh this is a and deep there's fake. and uh there's a man waiting to would appear to be yeah. receive the child. Yeah. Uh and he is clad in what appears to be a um in in wicker's wicket keeper wicket keeping gear. Sorry, I can't yeah. speak because this is an insane picture. But yeah. uh yeah. he's got a helmet on, he's got his club uh one kid day on. shirt. It looks like a one day shirt. So what, what color is that? What color is that? He goes, it's, it's yellow. So yellow? Yeah. It's yellow. Okay. And uh And not canary yellow, it's yellow. Right. Okay, yellow and uh, Think like think like two thousands Etnies skateboarding brand, yellow. It's got grey nickels, whites, white trousers, and they're yeah. whites, they're not creams. Yes. And uh Village. are they keeping pads? Yes, I think they, they are. are. Yeah. Yes, they are. And some white yeah. keeping gloves. Yeah. He's he's in the wicket keeper's pose. Yeah. Slightly crouched over. Yeah. He probably could get a li- sort of crouching a tiger hit Hand, finger situation. Hands together, palms facing down. Down with palms, uh, yes. And um and then in the series of shots, you can see him receiving the child. Yes. Uh, the child is actually completely clean. So yeah, this just is, looking at the, the, this ch- is the child's fake. being clean. This is a, this is a deep fake now that I see this. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, just, it's just like the kid's, the kid's probably three years old at this point. It actually <laughs> gives me some um, comfort that this is the case. Well, yeah. uh, but anyway. But oh, she's yeah. subscribed to this idea. Well, she oh, is. Of course. And, and good luck to them. But this is the, yeah, he's receiving the birth of a child um, in wicker keeping gear. That's and then pretty holds much it. And the then kid holds up them up. like Simba. Yes. At Pride Rock. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> and, and so can I add to this as well? He goes, Please add to it. We received. Um, so, so, this, so this is um, Brody Price, is the man. Oh, okay. In question. Because we've had some DMs and we've. I've had some, we had a lot of. And Brody won't know this, but many of his club mates. Anonymously right. DM'd right. to provide some, and did so without us asking it. No, and and let us know that 
uh, that he'd been doing a lot of media around this as well. Because because my first thought was like, well, let's let's just get this guy on the show to, right, to right, kick right, off. But right. he's doing all this other media. He was on Sunrise and shit. So was was like, he? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Okay. But and I do have an anonymous uh, message, so I can so we can <laughs> this add, will be good. So we can add some yeah, um, yeah. knowledge to this. So I, right. I suppose. Boys, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Brody Price had a kid, did you? <laughs> <laughs> For my sake, even though I'm pretty sure no one else at my club listens to this, all right. Please keep this anonymous. I'm aware you've seen the photos of my fellow clubman Brody at the birth of his recent child, dressed as a wicketkeeper. A few things about Brody: he's definitely a bigger AFL fan than he is cricket fan. A few of us are of the opinion that this was a play at him getting a game at the start of the season after we've recruited <laughs> two keepers over the off season. <laughs> <laughs> we played a two-grade competition and Brody's spot might be up for grabs. The worst part is that he went out and bought the keeping gear for the shoot because he's the third-choice keeper at a two-team club and had no use for owning a set of gloves. We already have a designated cricket nuffy at the club, so he can't claim that title, so we're pretty sure this is an attempt to earn his spot through social media exposure, which is out of control at the moment. He's been hammering the club WhatsApp with screenshots of various pages sharing his photos, including all the regional ABC Facebook pages, and a comment for Ian Healy. (laughs) Should our captain drop him for round one or select him, uh, but not as a keeper, and let him cop a barrage of verbals from the opposition and definitely his teammates. So that was anonymous. Uh, Right. Can I just say... That's from Brody's wife. He goes, before anything, congratulations. Yes. (laughs) To Brody and that his, must be said. To Brody and his wife. Yes, they've had a child, and they've uh, had a child. And Brody, these kind of you're not going to have the energy for these kind of hard jinx from now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you yeah, that. Yeah, too. enjoy your last laugh. Ex- exactly. <laughs> and sort of dressing up and getting shit. Your yeah, back's yeah. going to hurt. You already look like you've, yeah. you've got lower back issues anyway. Yeah, it's going. They're going to get worse. You're not going to be bothered to go and get those clothes, put yeah. them on, all that sort of stuff. So good luck to you enjoying this kind of stuff. Yeah, he's wearing a lid as well. That should yeah. be. I'm not sure what kind of projectile situation he was ex- he was expecting, but. It could be like a dream sequence as well. It's like, like it could be a metaphor because you do have to put a helmet on in, in many ways. Trenches. There's a lot coming at you now, Brody. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. there's a lot coming at you now. Mm-hmm. Not just in the real world as well, mentally. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot you got to deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so congratulations on that. Should he be dropped? Um, does he have time for cricket? Not I think entirely it's sure he should be selected. Mm-hmm. If I can answer it like that, can I? Yeah. On what basis? Well, you can't be rewarding this sort of shit. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're playing. Okay. You're playing in a team, you, Sam Perry, yeah. are playing in a team. You, Great. And <laughs> I'm back. How, how we going? I'm back, baby. <laughs> Where am I batting? Um, you got a teammate. He's doing this. He's seeing this on Facebook. It's a, it's a Wednesday morning. You're logging on at work, at your job, yep. in your little cubicle there. First yeah. question, why aren't you in quarantine? Yeah. <laughs> why aren't you isolating? <laughs> Where are your pants? <laughs> so, sorry, I had one the other day. Guy was like, it was from the UK. I, I'm sure many people, other people have seen this because we went around like on WhatsApp with about 15,000 different links to it. But um, it was like a guy, I think it was in the UK, he, was, he said, um, I got sent home from work because I was caught masturbating in the office because I thought it was at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than they those, were all busy. those uh, British Twitter accounts of just like messed up headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yes, okay, so you're, at, you, you're, you're at your desk job. Yeah. You log on. You see Brody on Facebook here. I oh, he said he's kicked, oh, him in the midst of kick great work. Oh, it's so exciting. What's this? Yeah. What am I looking at here? What? And then on the weekend you'll be like, Oh yeah, Brody's uh, Brody's batting three and you're you're five this week, mate. Good point. Am I? Or am I moving clubs I'm, again? And I'm cities? batting below that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> mate, I'm actually more shocked that Sunrise have picked that up. Like I understand on this fucking shit that we do, but Jesus. Uh, uh, why why do like you and I and this guy's written into us like mm-hmm. lead with a a tone of just con- condemnation of this. I mean, it's it's just. Well, are um, you saying it's beautiful? I'm not saying it's beautiful, but it's like it is very grade cricket. It's like this guy's just done this thing for a bit of a laugh and sending it around for some media, and we're like, "Fucking drop him! He's out of the club. <laughs> Can't believe I'm batting beneath this guy." <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah. she's had a baby. Yeah, I'm just saying, I don't think he's going to be playing much cricket in the future. Right. Okay. Well, hell, hell of a way to go out. Mm. Hell of a way to go out. Uh, now, of course, now let's let's just get straight into it, Pez. Um, okay. England, India. Okay. Yeah. 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 Into it. England, India. Um, the biggest. Start, they start Wednesday. Yeah, you know. I don't like it when test matches start Wednesday. It feels weird to me. Mate, don't you think the build up has felt weird? As in, yeah. there's been none because yeah, there's exactly. so much cricket. There's so much so COVID. much shit going on. <laughs> there's the Olympics. There's COVID. Yeah. Everything's getting silly. We'll get yeah. into that. But yeah. like, this mm. is a this is a fucking big series. This is a big series. Yeah. Like, like, let's not forget, especially in the context of what happened three months it's ago. I was going to say right. 
Like this, and I don't think anyone's really talking about this. Like in the sense that, like, th- like this is the square up series. Yeah, this is the square. up. This is a square up yeah. series. For oh, the, you're for, gonna make it spin, are you? For the fucking spitting cobra dust mounds of our <laughs> Menabad. <laughs> that were an affront to cricket. Well, it wasn't even I cricket. I was affronted. And, and frankly, it was, it was an affront to basic notions of civility. Yes, that's right. You know, and so yeah. will England, mm-hmm. with, despite all these injuries, we're going to talk about them, mm-hmm. and people are missing mm-hmm. for good reason, you know, will they make the decks wet, wet, yeah. wet? <laughs> Not to be confused with the band wet, wet, wet. <laughs> Love is all around. Love is all around. Uh, you know, I want this series to be seamers, mm-hmm. jukes, yes. movement, nibbles. Mm-hmm. Subtlety, not <laughs> drinks and nibbles. <laughs> Clouds, yeah. greenery, the crown, mm. the queen. Yes. Prince Philip played first class cricket <laughs> or he? some shit. RIP, I, I suppose. Um, Big front. Uh, like, I think he got a game in the 50s or something. I fucking bet he got a game. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> yeah. got watch the crown, I can see. Yeah. You know, like RIP, I guess. Um, you know? This is a square up series, and, yeah. it, and it needs, to be. It needs a, an accompanying level of build up to which there's been none. Been none. Someone's I want to say something. This is, I reckon, this is maybe one of the last, last hurrahs for Broad and Anderson, and I want it symbiotic. I want it overcast. I want tosses, which raise some eyebrows straight away. But yeah. like, and then some side mouth stuff went. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah. And then I oh, want going, Rohit Sharma playing leg side, and he's missed it outside off by about a foot and yes. a half. And then him being like, "What the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Yep. Can a spinner play, please? No, that's cheating when it spins too much. Exactly. We know that. We know that now." We learned that this year. When I it spins want, too much, that's cheating. I want equally extreme wickets, but according to English stereotypes. That's right. Who set the laws of the game. game. They govern. And they when govern they the do laws. it, yeah. that's fine. That's right. Because that's within the laws. We can do whatever we want. Of the game. As long as we do it. And we'll get to the ashes in a moment. I want. <laughs> I don't just want Duke's balls. I want deep red yeah, Duke's yeah, balls. Yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a maroon. Yeah. It's a maroon and it's a facade. Yes. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know. I actually want Sky Sports to put a filter on the screen so mm-hmm. that it's more overcast. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like in the usually like in the first test match of like an English summer. Now it's obviously so much later in their summer than usual, but like I like the the, the verdant greens that you see in the outfield. Like first Contrast. day, first test. Yeah. And that maroon ball fucking going around corners. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Now it's going to be interesting this because this is actually a really big series in yes. that like it's two England obviously sensational at home. India, the rising superpower. If they are or not, if they are not already there, mm. they are very close to it. If they win this series away from home, that's a huge market down for huge fucking being just the best team in all formats. And then with the World Cup coming, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to like the clutter of white ball cricket just subsiding for a bit. Like I know yeah, this same, shit's going same, on in the same. hundred or whatever. I, mean, I need my test, but like I just I just want it to go away. I just yeah. want some shit in white clothes yeah, for a yeah, while, same. and just I want to immerse in one contest mm-hmm. between two squads mm-hmm. with the verdant green and the filters that you're talking about. Because I was watching um, the hundred game, which happened two days ago. Was yeah. it the the London Spirit and uh, Southern Brave? And it was like, oh, because like this whole thing about the hundred. And just the people in the crowd, young people in the crowd, and it's like, oh, but it's like shiny lids now and it's white balls. And that's all good. That serves a mm. purpose in my life. Don't get me wrong, but I fucking need my test matches. Yeah, that's wash over you shit. Yeah, I it's wash over you shit. Oh, yeah. I know that name. Oh, I've got a bit go. of body wash. Exactly. A bit of mint green on it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Watch, oh, that smells nice. Oh, lavender. Great. Phone's ringing. Who is it? Uh, Dad? No. <laughs> it starts at Trent Bridge on Wednesday. Yeah, it does. Uh, so he goes, I don't. So so Ben Stokes is out. Yeah, he's out for the uh, summer. For the summer, yeah. Uh, he that's a that's a big. Like just in the context of the series, which is not the most important thing in this context, though. In the context of the series, that's enormous because oh, yeah. we know how good a player he is, and also what he does for the rest of that team. Yeah. One player knits and binds that team together so strongly that, in terms of like linking, he makes yeah. everyone else better. He's taken a break to prioritise his mental well-being and to rest his left index finger, which is not fully healed since his return to competitive cricket earlier. This month, he's replaced by Craig Overton. He goes, um, yeah, I think, talk about the impact of Stokes on the series in a second, but Mm -hmm. this bloke's been like, he's been in and out of bubbles for 16 months. Yep. Rajasthan, England Test, ODI, T20 squads, Durham in the T20 Blast, Northern Superchargers. He stepped into the England threes the other day when they all got COVID or whatever. finger was cooked as well. Yeah. His old man passed away last year after getting brain cancer in the final year of his life. Mm -hmm. Like, I go back to... Harmazon on the show mm-hmm. 
a few weeks ago saying that like he wasn't a nuffy for cricket. He yep. was just good at it. And like I've got no idea where Stokes is on this spectrum. Yep. Uh, not that it really matters. But it, like, it doesn't matter how much you love the game. Like A lot of these players are in like you know, lab rat, sterile, relentless hotel wall environments yep. Yep. away from family and friends. Mm-hmm. And it's got to do serious damage. And like to me, um, and so all the best to Ben Stokes, great. 100%. And and I think the ECB have been like that as well. Prioritizing mm-hmm. mental well being. I hope he um, uh, recovers. Uh, it, it like to me, it, it puts further spotlight on like the brutality of fulfilling sporting content mm. and contractual obligations mm. during this pandemic. Yeah. Like over yeah. here in Australia, mm-hmm. Brisbane. A lot of people know that a lot of Australia is in lockdown now because right. our vaccination rates are shit house. And we get onto that, but like. Um, Brisbane went into lockdown, snap mm-hmm. lockdown. That's where all the sports being played at the moment. Mm-hmm. And so you can cue, it, cue images of like AFL and NRL players milling in airports on mm-hmm. Saturday because their games have been cancelled, flying to whatever corner of Australia remains available <laughs> to play a game in <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because their character's in a TV show and they're legally required to do the TV <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's like... Yeah. It's, We've got you for 22 episodes. Mate, like it's... it's there's so much content that top level players of all sports like yep. have to keep up with now they're mm-hmm. stretched everyone's agreeing to everything because the revenues just have to be mm-hmm. taken mm-hmm. when they're there but like um and to be gobbled up but the, the, the you know players are at the top end multi format or whatever like they can't be expected to keep up i'm not mm. saying everyone's going to um experience mental health issues in relation to it but mm-hmm. it can't be um we can't be surprised mate there's absolutely no coincidence how many people who are having um they're pulling out of certain tournaments at certain at different times with the same degree of anxiety that they're experiencing. I'm not sure what, what Ben's issue actually is, but like, yeah. but people all over the world in all these different sports, but just stick with cricket for a moment. You've even seen with like, I know, for instance, during the, the end of last summer, heading into this West Indies series, mm-hmm. like Aaron Finch, I think has spoken about how much he really struggled with the, the, the lockdown environment, being away from families and stuff. All these guys who are of an age where they've got young families often, being away from home is one thing, but then being locked in a, you know, the, the confines of a hotel room, is very different also to even being at home isolating as well. That away from families, the the anxiety they would already experience with the exposure mm. of playing professional sport, the scrutiny they experience, and it's like, and now everyone is also at home watching them play their sports, and it's like they want because a lot of people have said as a consumer, sport has been a thing that's got me go, has got me through mm. having to do my own isolation or being away from my friends and family at the same time, and so almost the anxiety as a viewer increases because I want my team to win so bad because I need this so much because I'm going through my own thing at the Mm. same time, right? And now you're like putting this onto the players as well who are doing their own thing. It's this really unhealthy, toxic uh, environment. And there's no doubt that England's schedule over the past 18 months really, but especially in the last 12 months with how many test matches they're playing, the start of the 100, the World Cup, all this stuff. It's insane, that calendar. Mm. And like as it goes on, as it goes on, you understand why they have had to rotate their squad so much Mm. through that India series, through the New Zealand series, sorry, the in India series. And then we're trying to like leading into the Ashes talking about, well, there's some of these guys going to be away from home for four months and their families might not be able to be out here. Yeah, so it's like, where does, though, though professional cricket is my job, it's my life, it is my income, where does it actually fit into my life in mm. relation to all these other things? How totally. much do I actually need this, you know? Totally, yeah. Uh, interesting, Piers Morgan was able to get into Simone Biles, but didn't seem to apply to Ben Stokes. Ah, that's can't, interesting. Can't quite work that's out what that's about. Yeah. Uh, he goes, I, I don't, I'm not really sure how England cricket team <laughs> works without Ben Stokes. Yeah, same. Uh, like he's two players. Yeah. And probably the best in the world. Yeah. So is it but- Butler six, Curran seven? Well, well, uh, well does Dan well, Lawrence just come in for him? Well, works. Oh, works is works he, is injured. He, he's got a bruised he's heel. Injured. Okay. Uh, so and and then beyond that, Ollie Pope Ollie looks Pope's set to injured. miss, yeah, with a thigh injury per Wisden, um, mm. or should we say a grade three quadriceps? That's tear. what you should say. That's the Winnie the Pooh. He hasn't. <laughs> he hasn't. Um, he hasn't played since the second. He hasn't played a first class game since the second test against New Zealand mm. back in early, which was June. only last week. So. Yeah, that yeah. was. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so he's. So he's. Um. So I mean, that, that leaves the door for yeah. Hasib Hamid, I suppose, as a spare batter. Right, I yeah, think. well, and, and I think there's good – there's a, a, a lot of people are hoping he ends up becoming one of the openers as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, So no Stokes, no Wokes, no Archer. Mm. Ollie Stone's out for the mm-hmm. season, yeah. I think. Stressies. Uh, so, yeah, he's stressies. Badge of honour. <laughs> Means you bowl quick. Yeah. You should be happy. You should be happy with yeah. that, yeah. Result. 
Stress his result. Uh, we yeah, but you know, wet wickets, Aye, wet, wet wickets, wickets so. ste- uh, wet wickets, and square ups. Bit of nibble, drinks and nibbles. There's also, I mean, James Anderson is turning fifty three later this year. Yeah, and all this time he's in quick like in those uh, net videos, though. Well, he's buying quicker apparently. Mm. Um, all this time in and out of lockdown, I'm just saying, like for bowlers. When we were talking to Nokia, he was like, I can't buy 160 or 150 at the moment because I'm just in and out of lockdown all the time. I'm spending so much yeah. time in hotels, I just can't buy that quick. I just wonder, like, with Anderson, he played one test match in 2019, you know, by like one spell and then was out for the entire series. Just like at that age, you can be fragile. If, you, if they go down a bowler again, I don't know. I, I think India, the door's open here for India and how much they want it. Of course, they've, totally. got, they've got their own thing going on. Shubman Gill is obviously going to be replaced by, I think, Agarwal. He's got some, he's got some shin yeah. splints. Yep. Less of a badge of honour. you got shinnies. you got shins there. It's a bit of long distance running. Growing pains. <laughs> um, and someone else. But Prithvi Prith, Prith Shaw won't come in. It'll, it'll, I'll give it to Agarwal first. I, I, think, I think it's Agarwal. I think, uh, I think, I he's, I think he's... Yeah, same. I want it so bad. And Rahane might not be fit. Some talk about that. because he, he Just because he missed the... The warm up game, um, I think he's he's got a hamstring. He's got a will, string. Will he's, he's got a string. Do, will India be um, <laughs> Just cha- chastened by picking two spinners against New Zealand? Do you think they'll you know if it's wet, wet, wet? Not to be confused with a band. But yeah, it's, it's going to go quicks plus Ashwin. A lot of the time when they because they just want to pick their best players, yeah. and they go less they go less horses, don't they? Less horses. They go less horses, India, because yeah. they want to play Ashwin. They'll play Jadeja, whose record is obviously incredible, though. You got to get Siraj in that team, I reckon. Yeah. Just, just as an Australian has like seen what he, what he, what he has done since mm. he's played for India into that Test side since Australia. Mm. I think he's just got to get him to the team, and then Ben, who do you drop? Ashwin. Ashwin is an interesting one because he's sort of come. He had such a great tour as well away from home, and you're like, well, he's the veteran. He's got what 400 Test wickets. Do you drop Ashwin? Fuck, I don't know. He's scoring runs as well down the order. Would in Ashwin India. let you drop him? He wouldn't let you drop him. He'd still you play, don't. but you're, you're playing with 12, and that's illegal. And he could do huge damage through his YouTube channel as well. That's a good point. You got to think about that. Yeah. But then, like, but then what? So then, what are you talking there? Dropping Jadeja, who's averaging fifty with the bat the last couple of years, and you got fruit. You got fruit picker up in the stands as well. Who's <laughs> oh, yeah. got an absolute stranglehold <laughs> over your best? Best, I presume, would come in for Pope. I don't know. Yeah, that's be- probably why. Uh, is probably ahead of us even made. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. So, yeah, they've got a few choices there. A couple India. of choices. They've got a couple of options. A couple of options. Uh, I, I think that I'm excited. India, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. For England to see how good India are, because I think there's like, mm. I th- I get the sense that the rest of the world, especially after the World Test Championship final, are a bit like ah, India aren't they're like they're still a bit almost there, and mm. I'm just like from our experience, having watched what happened last summer, mm. and then following the IPL properly, looking at the depth of the ODI squad, their second string team in Sri Lanka has obviously got pumped string. in the in the <laughs> strings, uh, in the T20 series, but they won the ODI, and I'm just like nah, they're fucking here to play India, they're good. I, I'm actually excited for India to exhibit how good they are cuz I don't think England mm. know what like how good they can be just yet. Oh uh, yeah, I I know what you mean though. And England have a lot to prove. I'm There's excited to see whether like English conditions mm-hmm. can expose like India's dominance because mm. you know there are st- like guys who are on their way up to superstardom if not already there like mm. Rishab uh, mm-hmm. mm. I know Gill's not playing and stuff but, but even like, even like Boomer, because Boomer's record in England is not good. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, and Shami England, well. England conditions ask more questions of you. I mean, yeah, the yeah. last time India yeah. were out there, they lost four one, but it was it was, it was right. Close, on, it was yeah. on the knife edge. Yeah. You know, there was uh, century from Moeen Ali changed the series. Yeah, uh, that's right. Wokes did some shit. Stokes yeah. did some shit. Yeah. None of those three are there. Yeah. So it, I think India will be hardened and ready, particularly given their last, like mm. what they did in the last outing. And I mm. think that they are on a path to mm. ascendancy in test cricket and they are probably already there, but this is another one. This is a big building block for them yeah. having sort of, they've done Australia. Now yeah. they've got this, Yeah, but like English conditions, particularly if there's some juice, it's just a completely, um, it's a very testing environment it's hard. It's hard as we win. saw mm. in the test championship final mm-hmm. with New Zealand. I mm. mean, England at their, with a better side than what they've had before, they can play some good cricket. If Broad and Anderson are on, mm. it's not fucking easy scoring runs. So hey. can you, you know, for me, I want to see how good India are as well. Yeah, sure. Because sure, it, sure. England have players to test you out. At yeah, that for level. sure. You look at even the 2019 Ashes series where, I sort of view that series as like Australia fucking pumped England yeah. in most of that series. Yes. And it was two all. Yeah. Steve Smith has had one of the greatest away series ever in mm. the history of the game. Australia's bowled performed beautifully. Two all. Yeah. They're not, so mate, hard to win. Man, England 
like England cricket team, as most teams do at, at home, like like at yeah. home level. Yeah. As you were saying, like Australia could dominate seventy five percent of that series, but it's like England know the back streets mm. of their own grounds. Mm-hmm. Like they, they know how to engineer mm. themselves into positions. Mm. Like you might bowl, you might sort of they might. You might score some runs in the first innings, and then all like their openers are all of a sudden on fucking forty or fifty yeah, or something. Yeah. Maybe not. They Scrunching actually, them through they, the... actually haven't done that. For no, they haven't years, done that. But, <laughs> um, but like they know how to like leave balls that are really close to off stump. They, they uh, just they've got some. They've got a lot of advantages yeah. and a lot of know how yeah. of how to engineer their way through matches. Mm. How to scrunt wickets later on in the mm. later on in the day for a mm. little bit of movement or whatever crowd mm. get into it. It's I think it's it's set up to it could be a really really good series yeah. and there's some there's some very good matchups. I mean, still like you can't go past just like Anderson to Coley, uh, yeah, yeah. first day yeah. with with it doing a bit. That's going to yeah. be some good good. Probably the game. last time we'll see that matchup. Yeah, can't think of the next time they play each mm. other. Well, Anderson says his career's just getting started. Yeah, so yeah, right. Okay, yeah, Coley's around the corner. Is there? Okay. <laughs> Uh, anything else on that series? No, looking forward to it. We're doing our dailies. Uh, we'll put, and we'll yeah. put that audio up on Patreon as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. Join. That's right. So that starts on Wednesday, uh, the YouTube dailies, and then the audio on patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. If that's how you want to do it, I think this series will actually just be about just showing how good New Zealand are. Although it would have been good if, if India did win the World Test Championship final, then Kylie would have walked out to the to all tosses holding the big lollipop. As is his one. As is his one. Australia, Pez. Yes. Um... Weird build up, uh, just in the press. Is there anything to even talk about there? Just about how like yeah. there's a bit of chat about uh, fucking England having a sook because because their families can't come out here and think about all the things we've ever done for you. Last year we played this t- this ODI series. Uh, what about yeah, the Rugby yeah, League World yeah, Cup? Uh, yeah. Some other gear going. Two on. levels, two levels. So like for for background, uh, story broke on the BBC last week. I think that. Um, you know, there's gonna there's some there's gonna be some representations from the uh, England players, or well, cricket players union PCB, I think uh, PCA, God, um, about them bringing their families because at the moment under the current Australian uh, you know border mm. conditions, mm-hmm. it's not permissible. Yeah, and normally these things are done through diplomatic channels behind closed doors. Uh, it was about to happen, and I'd imagine that all the stakeholders involved. CA, ECB, players, yeah. uh, and the Australian government mm-hmm. will probably want to get it done and will get it done. Yeah. But it is sensitive. Mm. Uh, and then um, running parallel to that or adjacent to that is then this like lame-ass media um, mm. build up around it where there's this kind of stereotypical exchange of uh, – <laughs> you know, high-handed Englishness that Australians hate Mm. and then Aussies being fucking psycho about borders, which we are, which is dreadful, Mm. you know. Like, this whole issue about England players bringing their families and stuff is born of an appalling um, governmental situation here where, like, there are Aussies who can't get home Mm. from overseas. Unless you've got an investor visa. If, if we were able just to bring people into the country and put them in a quarantine situation yeah. that wasn't fucking leaky hotels with fucking uh, shit flying everywhere yeah. and that the federal government sorted that out mm. and we weren't psychos about borders, this wouldn't be a problem. You or know? just get a fucking jab. Can we get one? Get a jab? You know, what What the federal government's done with people like stuck overseas, I think is, is dreadful. You know, you're from you're right. from a country, you want to come home yeah. and you can't. And yeah. that's part of the sensitivity here because they don't right. want to look like um, there's some, you know, everyone's equal, but some are more equal than others. Yeah, All the England yeah, players yeah. get their families in, but what about if I'm an Aussie and I can't get home? You know, mm-hmm. like that, that's fair enough. Mm-hmm. The government could actually sort both out, I think. Unless you're going to work on Big Brother as well. You got some um, some racist views you want to Or you can get paid, say your mm-hmm. racist shit, then mm-hmm. go home yeah. as well. I don't know. So no, yeah, names escaped me. Fuck her name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you got this like public lobbying from uh, Michael Vaughan, who's made, I think it's a pretty reasonable point. Like England players bring their families because they've been fucking away for like because they're going they're going like straight from the world world T twenty world T twenty yeah and then some guys will be in the IPL before then into the tweet world T twenty into four months in yeah. Australia where the crowds here are lovely yeah lovely <laughs> uh, and then like you've got this sort of response from a couple of writers here like Malcolm Con uh, like is that know, a pop? pretty pretty funny. <laughs> Um, yeah. but it just looks like phony, you know, just saying oh high handed Englishness or right, whatever. Right, like right, um, right. 
but like it just looks like phony ashes build up. Oh, mm. the ashes might not be on. It's gonna be on. Um, but I still clicked on the story. So who's the real loser? That's right. And I got exposed to a few ads and I bought some products. Yeah, you got to click on the links there and you got mm. taken down some dark dark holes there. Yeah, exactly. One weird trick. Yeah, mate. <laughs> I know it's um, I know it is sensitive, especially with this new thing with this novel coronavirus that's been mm, going around. Yeah, SARS-CoV two just been going around a bit at the moment. Um, just a flu. But uh, yeah, mate, I just can't escape that it, it it'll get sorted. It'll just get sorted. The, the virus or? The virus won't get sorted. Mm. Yeah, it gets sorted. You know how that like. Um, like the families will be here. They'll play. Yeah. They won't just be happy about it, but they'll play. Trust the diplomatic channels. Like in the past, mm. this would just be like, you know, blokes in suits. And they are blokes in suits and briefing right. documents, mm -hmm. uh, sitting down, thrashing it over a meeting, then retiring to uh, Lee's Fortuna Court That's in right. uh, Crow's Nest. Yeah. It, this time in smart casual gear. They've mm -hmm. retired back to the hotels, mm -hmm. smart casual gear. Yeah. Go to Lee's Fortuna Court. Or rubber have, tug. Have some, uh, that's later. Yeah. Sit down, have some lovely Chinese, mm -hmm. brought to you by Stanley, who owns Lee's Fortuna Court. He's very charming. He's yep. your Chinese mate, Stanley. Mm -hmm. uh, go to the Crowy afterwards, have mm -hmm. a couple of drinks. Mm -hmm. Stewie McGill's restaurant's around the corner. It used to be. Is Stewie doing anything? Yeah. Uh, this is in the past. Stewie yeah. doing anything? Right. Oh, yeah, right. okay. Right. Yeah. And then the night kicks off, yeah, yeah. and everybody does what they need to do after that. Yep. That's how these things <laughs> get sorted out. <laughs> Now it's all on Zoom. Yeah, now it's all yeah, Zoom. It's all, it's all cleansed. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah now you got... It's, yeah. 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 I can understand why a lot of yeah. these guys in these jobs don't know how to sort these things out anymore. Because unless you've got these fortune court. Yeah. If you can't broker a deal over a fortune cookie, then what hope have we got? And I've always said that. I actually went to Lee's fortune or a rub and court tug. on my Bucks party. Here we go. Yeah. You broke some deals over a hand. We only just met, hadn't we? Hand yeah, job my in a curtain party? room. No, well, I got. I went to Lee's Fortune Court. Silk robe under there. It'd been a. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say something. <laughs> <laughs> been we'd been out for a few hours and we went to Lee's Fortune Court. Yeah. Um, didn't feel like eating at that point, and no one else did either. Ah, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't have another bite. <laughs> <laughs> Lost my appetite completely. <laughs> Couldn't have another bite. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, 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 what's next? Uh, yeah, what's next? Something else. Trevor Holmes? Yeah, Trevor Holmes, mate. Dan uh, Bredig broke this story. Dan Bredig's at the age now. Congrats to Dan. What are we talking about? Uh, Trevor Holmes has been chairman of selectors or involved in the selectoral Since apparatus. Since the mid-50s, for, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh, <laughs> 16 years from 1995 Fuck. through to 2021. There was, a, there was a gap. There was a, there was a break in the middle, yeah. which is when all the Cadditch shit happened. So he doesn't have to like if if he was there for the Cadditch Clark yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, he wouldn't still be there. Mate, that was some good gear. Andrew Hilditch, who was involved in the selections at the time, possibly chairman of selectors. One of the stories that came out with Hones retiring here yeah. is that like he got jostled at like the Adelaide Oval. Uh, jostled, jostled by fans Fuck. after the Clark Cadditch thing. No way. Yeah, I haven't seen a good jostling in ages. You get a melee. You know, yeah, you get a melee. Like jostling, a little scuffle. Yeah, well, back and forth. I'm just thinking about like the experience. Well, will that, they? Won't they? Ah, oh, it's back to the rub and tug. Back to the rub and tug. <laughs> Nothing better than a will they? Won't they? Massage. <laughs> Said others. It's like a pilot ad. <laughs> just sixty minutes of anxiety. Will they? Won't? I don't. People tell me. Couldn't have another bite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm stuffed. Uh, <laughs> I'm absolutely spent here. <laughs> uh, <sighs> being a select, like, you know, Trevor Hones, who played cookie. four tests, I believe, yeah, for Australia. Tests, like, yeah, he'll be yeah. more known for being a selector, I'd imagine. Like, yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. being like a, being a selector for that long. Like, you're, you're like a silent <laughs> human pinata. Oh, mate. Like, you're, b because, you know, he, he a selector more than anything else. So not only to select the team, but they become the the um, the vehicle to foist your anger upon if you don't get what you want. Of course, right? Yes, yes. Screaming into the internet or wherever. Yes, or they are own, the messenger. Or your own pillow to which at the end you of the shoot. night. Um, but he was there when he like he backed Mark Taylor when Mark Taylor couldn't hit one off the square for about two to three years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then Got him did, a game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he dropped Ian Healy for Gilchrist. Yeah. Good decision, I'd imagine. Yeah. A couple of years too late. Although Healy did ask if he could play one more summer. That's right. And they said no. And he said, what about one more game? And they said no. Hones, or Cracker, I should call him Cracker. Cracker recommended uh, Warren for the captaincy. Okay. With the selection, with selectors. And then that was right. overturned by the ACB directors. Steve Ward had something to say about that, I'd imagine. <laughs> he goes, what makes a, like, I want to ask, what makes a great selector? And I want to go even further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because there was a great picture of Holmes with this, with, with Brady's article. He's talking yeah. to David Warner. Right. Warner's like looking straight ahead, like with his arms outstretched. Perfect. And Holmes is, has got like massive glasses on. Let's call them aviators now. Let's call them. Looking over Warner's shoulder or yep. away from Warner towards what seems to be cricket nets with his arms folded. Excellent. This is like well, this Excellent. guy's. That's the power stance. That's that's better than an AB de Villiers late block when it comes to posture and pose. Yep, 100%. Right? And, and technique. That's right. Uh, I want to ask you about something I know nothing about. He Far goes, away. Here's, a, here's something in the grade cricket diaspora that I never experienced. Right. A selection meeting. I was never a captain. Oh, okay, right. So I never saw what a selection meeting looked like. All I ever saw was Tuesday afternoon, yeah, yeah, yeah. the captain's retiring mm-hmm. just before the end of training. To Lee's walk, Fortuna Court. Walk to <laughs> Lee's Fortuna Court. <laughs> I just saw blokes retiring into a... I presume that's where you guys you went go, afterwards. <laughs> you, go, you go to a curtained room <laughs> out the back and you come out looking very relaxed. <laughs> Why are they curtains? It's not a private room. Um, just blokes retiring... <sighs> I saw blokes retiring into a clubhouse. He goes, "I'd like," yeah. and I always imagine it's like you know the United Nations General Assembly. You right. know, he's sitting right. around right. microphones. You got yeah. earpieces for translators, yeah. and the, you know there'd be a big rough and tumble over like who yeah. was picked where. Bit and of a jostle. How do like how did you did you know you would say captaining threes right or twos? It's yeah, like yeah. How, how much. Wait, did you have politically to like get guys into the team? Yeah. yeah. Or, or if someone said, I think, you know, threes said, like, I think he's ready for twos. So it's just, a, no. it's just a big alpha power play, mate, the entire yeah. thing. Because one of the big um, frustrations you get as a player is that, like, you feel that someone gets picked ahead of you based on feel or like they're being prioritized ahead of you just because they're younger, better looking, bigger penis than you. Those are always the three factors that you of course. have to assess. Goes without saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually embarrassed that I had to even say that. Yeah. It's for, it's for the uninitiated. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Younger, better looking, a bigger penis. Than you. This is actually an induction episode to the Great Cricketer, episode one sixty three. Speaking of fucking talk, Rowan Browning, Jesus. Hey, what anyway. a salad on that, and just everything. Oh, just everything. He's everything. Absolute real. Yeah. yeah, blue, blue blood, private school stuff. Though, I suppose one hundred percent. Quick, hey, quick. Um, but yeah, so but then I basically just had like you looked at you looked at someone, you'd be like, oh, I've got a feeling about them. Based on feeling. their penis size, yeah. No, but no. You you just ha- you just have a, you have a look at them in the nets, or you like them in your team because they fit in well to your team or whatever. Mm. And then there's other guys. Then there's basically like who played more first grade games in the selection panel would then have a saying, or who's putting more money into the club who will mm. then say no, he'll play um he'll play second grade next week because um well his his mum's actually quite attractive. So did you bit of that going on did as you well. spend much time? I understand. Did you spend? It's never about the results. It's never about the results. Do you ever spend much time like? Um, defending a player being in the team, like rather than like them getting drops. Like, no, nah, I'd like to hang. I'll, you need I'll to be careful with that stuff because you need mm. to read the room in terms of what their social capital is as well. It's a whole fucking dance you got to mm. do, man. Because mm. yeah, so like if I if I really like someone on the team and I like them as a bloke, well, they're going to get picked. Mm. Like you are going to get picked as a good bloke. Mm. That is that is mm. a factor. True, and younger big pieces, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause that's laughs> <home. laughs> so. But you need to be. But if someone's like really anti, like mate, he's averaged three for the last seven seasons. He hasn't played subs, and I'm like, well, that's not really my issue. But then you need to read the room, and be like, well, can I trade this person with this other person who might give me better results? Because I want to play finals. Because that right. make me feel something as the captain, therefore make me look good. And then with that done, given you've played a role as a selector, right? Uh, and this is in you know homage yes. to Trevor Cracker Hons, yes, as I've that's heard right. some people yeah. say, Hons, right? Uh, retiring. How did you deliver news of a player's, let's cut to the chase, yeah. axing? Um, the thing that I found hardest was um, dealing with like, because I was... I was your style though. Um, phone call. Phone call. Not like pr- take him aside at training or something and like put an arm around him. Listen, look, we've decided. No, no, no. I, no I would be much better now because I'm just older than what I was then somehow yeah, that's as, good. as time works. Definitely are older. But... Um, but yeah, just dealing with like a whole bunch of emotions, which you all feel as players, we're dealing with things like people complaining about being dropped and like fundamentally, whilst I just said this, all this like other bullshit dance that goes on, which does genuinely pay a factor in club cricket. Oh, yeah. But fundamentally, if you've scored enough runs, you're never going to get dropped. Yeah. If you've taken enough wickets, whatever. Mm. So, so what did you say? So like, let, could we do it? Like, call me go. up. Yep. I've got my phone here. Yep. You, you're calling? It's calling? As in like the I'll give you one ring if you haven't picked that. That's your yeah, problem now. Right. Yeah, g'day. You just you just see the name. <laughs> just check, just check, check the uh, team hey. sheet the next day. Hey, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we're laughing. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, we've mates. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Sam. Um, mate, uh, yeah, team's going this week. Mate, bad news. Um, I like it. Bad news, yeah. Fuck. Bad news. Um, 
I'm sure you saw this coming. Yeah. Uh, Damo on, can't play. Based on your results, but yeah. um, I'm going to need a lift. Because uh, I've got a <laughs> couple of beers playing on Friday night and uh, I'll leave a car at home. <laughs> you fucking morphed into Nugsy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really awkward right now and, uh, and uh, I don't know how to be myself. That's right. Um, yeah. But then it's like... It, the, the, what do you say? The delivering, of, like the delivering of the news itself is fine. It's the, it's like what your reaction is going to be. It's like... Because then, then it can go one of three ways, really. Mm. It's like massive blow-ups. You get you got that? Real sad. Or, real sad. Or just kind of like um, going through the seven stages of grief and just basically acceptance coming towards that and being like, yeah, I understand. But then you can feel emotions underneath all of that at the same time. Mm. But blow ups never, never really, because at my club I had enough social capital where I think it was like, oh, just you know, shoot for the king. <laughs> <laughs> you say, like, would you say like bad bad news? Like, just uh, look, we need you to go back a grade yeah. or whatever. Are you going to be Scott Gun School be, runs? You're going to be fours this week. Um, mm. mate, it's a good team there. Um, I heard, I heard. I don't know any of the guys' names. Yeah, I've <laughs> never played that grade before. I don't know what time it starts. Yeah, I've actually never heard the ground that you're playing at either. Um, <laughs> So don't ask me for directions. And actually, if you could do me a favor and actually delete my number, because I think you and I both know that this is over. This is done. You had, you had your one chance. Sure, you got you batted seven, didn't bat, uh, but you dropped the catch, and um, I didn't see you in the showers afterwards. So um, your penis is unfortunately <laughs> just slightly shorter than what I'd like it to be for inclusion in this <laughs> cricket team. <laughs> We're coming 14th at the moment, and uh, finals unrealistic proposition. But um, it's not an attractive piece, <laughs> uh, you know. The even though it's a bit it. short, it just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Trevor Hines would like to go through. How many times would I, maybe that's yeah. why they liked him so much? Mate, Clark Cadditch, I just solved it. Unfortunately, not an aesthetic penis. He'd have like Hines. It would be great to interview him and. Mm. Try and get under the hood. Under the hood. <laughs> Not a mistake. <laughs> get under the hood of what he's like, <laughs> of what made him such a great and like, like sustained selector. Like uh, maybe he had tips and tricks. Uh. <laughs> he, <laughs> tips and tricks. <laughs> he, ha- he had some tricks to mm-hmm. uh, stay on side or be yeah, respected. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Game of Thrones. It really is. As a selector, I would imagine. Um, all right. Um, there's so many other things to talk about. Shane Warren's got COVID. The hundred's been going on. Mark Boucher's um, been accused of racism. Um, but Nick Maddinson's about to come over. Yeah. And so yeah. let's do our um, let's do our reads with him as a. Uh, Are you going to do it with him? Yeah. Yeah. As, okay. as, as a as a warm up as a gift. Okay. Well, uh, we're just going to take five here, and then uh, right. Well, actually, we won't, no, we won't. There won't be five minutes of silence mm. in the show. Let's be yeah. clear about that. Just unless, so. unless you know, we could try that as a as a as a technique. Mm. Dead air. Tips and who, tricks. Who, who knew how much people loved it? <laughs> Tips and I can tricks. Just see, I can just see Trevor Owens going to the speaking circuit. Yeah. Tips and tricks with Cracker. You have to put two and two together, really. Like, if, as you suggest, selections yeah. are ultimately down to penis size. Yeah. And he's been a selector for 16 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then put two and two together. Well. You know, he... Uh, How's the piece on it? Say no more. It's the title of the show now, isn't it? Here's <laughs> <laughs> Nick Madison. Well, here goes, as ever, none of this is possible without our dear friends, and they're always dear friends. And there's Very a reason I'm saying the word dear. Why is and that? I'll let you know. Please. But those dear friends are those... Beautiful men and women from Budgie Smuggler. Many of them are very beautiful, actually, if you follow them on Instagram. That's cool. Budgie Smuggler, where if you use the code CHAMP... Yeah. At checkout, you're going right. to get free custom design free on custom your custom design. budgies, your custom apparel, all of that sort of gear. Now, every week, as the listener knows, and mm-hmm. it is one listener, and it's my mum, <laughs> yeah. they know that we like to make a suggestion of what that design might be. Yep. Now, this week, we've been talking about stereotypes, English stereotypical wickets. Right. Now, stereotypes are a fraught issue. Yeah. He goes. Yeah, You let's don't want to delve careful. too... Yeah, let's be... And you especially. Right, okay. Be very careful. Yeah, okay. Um, but I figured, why don't we just sort of, you know, wet the appetite, get mm-hmm. the ball rolling on a couple of stereotypes. Let's now, when Let's I type English stereotypes or British stereotypes yeah. in to the internet. Right. British bulldog stuff. Bit of Churchill. I said politeness, mm-hmm. humor, right. tea, lack of emotion. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how you, I don't know how you design lack of emotion. Yeah. And I don't think it's really helpful to be pushing that stereotype. I'm just a conduit between the internet right. and the Don't shoot listener. the messenger. Um, weather. Oh, that's not teeth. That's that's no good. Come on. When, well, exactly. I'm just again. I'm I played cricket with a guy who I nicknamed Teeth. 
because I was Did 15. You? Yeah, yeah. Do you know why? Why? He, uh, he was a good off-spinner. Yeah, because I'm an Australian with no creativity. <laughs> no. Nah. You were telling me another story had, today. Well, well what? <laughs> uh, sorry, I actually can't say that on air. <laughs> he had teeth? Oh, yeah, yeah, either, yeah. So I played... Who are we talking about? That came up. Yeah. I was talking about a guy who Double had Daryl Barrel. Oh, we're talking about Zach Stubbley Cook. Yeah, Stubblety. Stubblety Cook. Zach Stubblety Cook. Yes. Now there is gentry. Mm. That's private school right there. That's England. That's There's England. got to be an English link. There. Well, he's got golds. So that's Australian. Um, I played cricket with a guy who had a Darryl, double barreled surname. And uh, and I was, it was like one of my first games in fifth grade. And this guy was like three years younger than me. And I was like 17 or 18. Mm. So he was 14, 15. And everyone just called him two dads. Two dads. Like he's got a hyphenated name because yeah. they've kept both names. That's right. So let's make fun of him for potentially and probably not really no, having not two even. dads. Yeah. That was that was the elementary yeah. nature of that. Yeah. Nice. So stereotypes can be good. If you've got That's a double barreled last name. Hey, let us know. Put it on your design. <laughs> Own it. Times yeah, have changed. Okay. There are Australian stereotypes as well, just to, to well. you know, even things up. Mm-hmm. What am I looking I mean, look at this. I'm on the. I'm just a conjurer on the internet. Shrimp on the Barbie, not a thing. The entire continent is a desert. Have you ever put shrimp on the Barbie, or ever s- or prawns? Yeah, ever said the word shrimp? I've never said the word shrimp in the context of eating prawns. Yeah. What do you? What do you? There, oh, shrimp. Some shrimp. Pardon? Yeah. Zach Stubblety Cook. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you can do all that at budgiesmuggler.com. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, yeah. Oh, look who's joined us here, actually. Nick Madden said, good day. Nick, 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 sit down. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, what sorry, you that you, sorry that you're going to have to go through this. Right. Uh, but um, just quickly, our dear friends at Manscaped as well. Are they yeah. dear friends? Yeah. Yeah, suppose so. Yeah. Uh, here goes some new copy. They're, oh, really? they're unleashing the performance package 4.0. Nick, apologies for this. But uh, exciting news. Our friends at Manscaped just launched their fourth generation performance package. Finally. This ultimate package includes the Lawn Mower 4.0. Yeah. The leaders in male grooming have done it again to take your grooming game next level. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with a new yeah. performance package 4.0 yeah. by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code TGC. Uh, he goes, you've got a 3.0. Yeah, mate. And how I found out about this, one of my mates messaged me the other, like literally this week. And he's like, what the, uh, what the, uh, he was texting me, but he sounded yeah. like this. He yeah, goes, yeah. what the, uh, what the, uh, Law Murray got over there. Oh, yeah. And I said, oh, the three, he's like, well, is it the 4.0? I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean 4.0? I've got a Victor lawnmower, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have back. an apartment, but yeah. I don't have any lawn, mm. um, except for my pubic region. But, but, not anyway, any, but, but not anymore. Well, not anymore. Thanks to the lawn. <laughs> I can't talk like that. Mm. Anyway, yeah, he, he was one who broke to me. Not the wonderful people at Manscaped. He was one mm. who broke to me that there's a 4.0. Yeah. It's a fourth generation trimmer, mate. You see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I, I glad I you came. It's called the, uh, the lawnmower. The yeah, lawnmower, uh, yeah. Interesting name for that part of the... Yeah, yeah I mean, it, that's a great point because do you want the image of a lawnmower going over your balls? Nick know. Madison? Nah, I wouldn't. No. Because I still think about like yeah, what when. Do you reckon? You, 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 <laughs> you especially. <laughs> yeah. What are you? You've got you're sitting, here with, you're yeah. sitting here with no pants on yeah. for a start. Yeah. No, like when I think about a lawnmower, like a Victor lawnmower, mm. which is a rival brand to the. <laughs> not, <laughs> to the Manscaped to the lawnmower Manscaped. 4.0. But when I think Sometimes about. Sometimes when my Victor lawnmower is not working out in the backyard, I just get the <laughs> Manscaped. It's like a very was- long job. <laughs> <laughs> Worth yeah, it. It's the, it's the reward well, of the end. There's an LED light. That's you know, right. When I want to do it at night on yeah. my own. Tori, my yeah. wife comes out 3 a.m. Why are you mowing the lawn with your manscape? <laughs> I've got this LED. What are you doing with that spray? You're yeah. just moistening the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> what are you What are you wiping the lawn for? Um, now when I think seven thousand RPM motor. <laughs> when I think about a lawnmower, I think about my dad being. He's like showing me like the bottom of a lawnmower yeah. and saying like, don't ever put your hand into like the blades. Oh, that's a great lesson. Yeah. Fuck, I should say that to my children. Yeah. Don't ever put your hand in that. You yeah. sort of presume it, but... You would think it. But then it's a bit like, don't touch that first thing you do. Definitely touching that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't look at the sun. Restrictive language. Well, first thing I'm going to do, have a look at that. <laughs> have a big old look. Have a look here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually have memories yeah. now of my um, of my dad mowing the lawn. Right. Out in, uh, back in Ride in Why does this feel like a euphemism now? We've turned this into a, it feels like. Well, I mean, that's what the Manscaped is, isn't it? They use lawnmower. I guess sure. it's a, that's yeah, the sure, idea. Sure. Uh, but his shirt was off. Right. Oh, yeah. Glistening. Hairy. 
Oh, right. Surprise yeah, and I, and that gave me and that look, it gave me a feeling of safety. Sure. Though I wonder if today, mm-hmm. if he was mowing the lawn, whether he'd go over his chest with a manscaped lawnmower yeah. 4.0. The weed whacker is also waterproof <laughs> and uses 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. Yeah. Um, nose and ear hair. Tra- Listen, if you get the manscaped 4.0, you're going to get all this other shit with it yeah. as well for your nose and your ears. You're going to get some boxes. But the main thing is you're going to be able to shave your pubic hair region, as I've yeah. mentioned many, many times on the show before, yeah. in a very comfortable way. You can do it in the shower uh, and it will all be gone. And you don't have to worry about any weird, like, uh, you know, scissors trimming or anything. Nick, I'm not going to ask you for the endorsement because you're not actually part of this or getting any money from well, this. Well, no, okay. no nicks or cuts. Yeah, no, yeah, sure. Um well, it's got proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and there's other gifts as well. So, anyway, look, um, you get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TGC at manscaped.com. Hey, people are using them. Yep. People are using them. And if you, if you can't afford an actual lawnmower, you yeah. can, you, I'm sure it does chop grass. Lawn as well. Yeah, you know, if you got a small. That's to be confirmed. Lawns are getting smaller and smaller, and that's one of the problems with Australian cricket, which we've said for a long time. I've always said that. Yeah, and we'll talk to Nick about that later. Uh, but yeah, your <laughs> balls have been through enough this past year. Treat them with the best tools for the job from Manscaped. Use code TJC for twenty percent off. Why is it when we do this every second week with Manscaped? Yeah, and it feels just normal. But then when there's another human in the room doing that, like, oh, this is the most absurd thing anyone's mm. ever said. Mm. Yeah. So I wasn't sorry sure when about to interject that. In. No, no, yeah, I was like, "What? what can I add to this?" Yeah, uh, sorry for putting. you Do you think that. that that was a good uh, sell for that product? Great sell. Yeah. Great sell. Like, Would I you want be, one now? You want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want the four point oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting any cut of this, all right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's do the thing now. Hey, let's let's do the thing. So we're very pleased, genuinely, uh, to be joined by this man who you know who it is. It's it's Nick Manderson, but he he is one of the most talented batsmen in the country. Has been for a very long time. Uh, he's a Test cricketer. He's currently with Victoria. He was brought up in Sydney Test cricket, though, when Sydney Test cricket, mm. aka grade cricket, was good. You know, when it was a thing. Uh, he joins us today in studio. He's a friend of the show, uh, Maddo. Welcome to the Great Cricketer, and welcome to TJC Towers as well. You know, yeah. being here in person with us. No, thanks for having me. It's great. Um, also, the starting off with the, the manscaping, it's probably a good intro as well, but yeah, very happy <laughs> to be uh, here and get stuck into it. Most yeah. of our questions will be penis-based today, mm, most of them. We've been talking about that quite a lot before yep. you came in okay. as well, um, just around selections and stuff. So anyway, um, let's get right into it. You've moved from Sydney to Melbourne. Um, you know, there's nothing the nation loves more, especially those along the East Coast, than just a, a straight up Sydney versus Melbourne comparison. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah people love it. Debate. They can't yeah. get over it. <laughs> uh, so you know, outline your bona fides. Like, take a choice. W- which is better and why? Because we're three Sydney siders yep. by birth. Now here residing in Melbourne, so this is a controversial point. It is. Um, I'm going to say Melbourne. At wow. the moment. I'm. I had a lot to do with Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah financially. Yeah, so yeah. Make sure uh, Graffy's listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 extra, extra couple of years. Um, but I love Melbourne. I'd never really spent much time here apart from um, playing the odd Shield game or something. But um, as soon as I moved here, I felt it was a pretty warming um, place to be. People were really nice. And just the environment in terms of cricket as well um, suited my lifestyle and suited where I was at. And, uh, yeah, I reckon... At the moment, I'm pretty keen to stay in Melbourne as long as I can. You played for Sutherland, yep. Easts, St Kilda. Have I missed anyone there? No, that's no those, those three. Big differences? Big differences between any of those clubs or all yeah. exactly the same? Compare and contrast Sydney grade yeah. and Melbourne yeah, well, Premier Melbourne cricket. Much more footy chat. A lot more, yeah, a lot more like, probably a bit more serious to be honest. Really? Um, found my first couple of sessions. I came down uncontracted, so I was mm. relying on going to club training and a lot of the reason I ended up at St Kilda was because of the facilities and everything mm. we got there. And, um, Me too, yeah. Yeah, I found it very, <laughs> very... A bit before you, but... Yeah. <laughs> I found it very, um, so different, like, just in terms of, it was a bit more of a professional setup. Um, and I, I think as well with the footy culture, that kind of translates a bit into yeah. to that environment. But um, I guess in... My favourite club out of three. I shouldn't probably pick sides here. Well, I've still played St Kilda, but I love my time at East. Yeah, um, oh, as you know, you why is that? Yeah, down at Bondi. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, a lot of great no masks that were playing to the. <laughs> <laughs> 
a lot of so, great friends at the club, and that's the reason yeah. I ended up moving there. So yeah, it was yeah. pretty pretty fun time. Um, my early twenties playing in, in yeah. one night Waverley Oval. Had, yeah. a, had a great time. Can, what I, can I just ask just on the um, the serious side of like uh, Victorian grade cricket, whatever mm. we call it? Uh, when I started playing at St Kilda, and I really don't mean to draw a comparison, but like um, Graham Rummins, who'd played Sydney and Melbourne grade cricket, took me inside and said like aside from the first training at St Kilda and said, so what, what you need to realise is that everyone here in Melbourne just wants to pretend it's footy. Yeah. Like, and I because we're that. doing all these uh, fitness <laughs> and shit yeah. and like, it was like, why, why are we not in the nets? Yeah. Why is everyone just running? And also everyone's really good at running Yeah, uh, and yelling out, like get around him and just tap each other on the bum and stuff. Yeah, like, like, grab a jumper. Like, grab yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every, like? Everyone get a touch. <laughs> it's like, but I'm batting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch of uh, what? Yeah. Uh, it w- like, is, is that consistent with your experience as well? Yeah, spot on. Mm. Yeah. No, pretty so confused. And exactly, now, do you exactly the same. I remember at St Kilda, we had the chat. Though. I wish I'd had the chat because then I would have yeah. gone into it knowing yeah. what to expect. I didn't have that chat. Have you got the chat now? Have you picked up like Victorian footy lexical? chat? Yeah. Nah, I just I just try to avoid when the footy comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my hand up, go see the physio for half an hour. Or something. So. Wait, <laughs> at St Kilda in twenty eleven, uh, when I, like a uh, 2012, like for pre season. They had um, themed spin classes, and everyone and came in their favourite hey, footy that's jersey. Still going on. Oh man, guarantee! I got a message on the on the St Kilda WhatsApp. I think last night for the the session um, for preseason starting in the next week mm. with the themes for the the spin classes. So that's yeah, still still a thing. What do you do? Like, do you have like a rugby league jersey, or would you bring like you're a cyclist? You know, do you just wear like yeah. what? What are we looking at? Turn up in your yeah, kit. Getting the lycra. Right? Yeah, well, I put the hat. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't get that on. So, yeah, so probably going the East hat. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We might have to pull out like a Wallabies jersey or something like yeah. that. That was kind of the sport I grew up playing. Yeah, so. yeah. What do you? What if you turned up in like? I mean, that's an opportunity for you to turn up in this Aussie kit, isn't it? Really, as well. Yeah, baggy green. Yeah, yeah, yeah baggy green. Yeah. Have you ever kit. done that? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Speaking of that, like when you moved down here, you had literally played Test cricket for Australia like a year or two years before, or something yeah. like that. And then you come down here and you're not contracted, and you're trying to like. Get into a get a contract through grade runs, as you were just saying yeah. before. Like, fuck, that's a weird experience, man. Like, how recently you had played yeah. at the highest form of the game. Yeah. Like, what well, was that like? It was a bit of a shock. Like, yeah. Especially the way everything kind of ended. I felt like I was, wasn't was playing the well that well the year following. Um, but I always thought I was still going to be in the squad. I'd mm. just won one day player of the year for New South Wales and thought, well, I mightn't get a chance in the Shield. Yeah, that's right. Anymore. But that. like, I was still only 27, I think, at the time. Yeah. So I thought I was just kind of hitting my prime as they say like late yeah, 20s yeah. but um it was totally different but i probably needed it as well like i started when i was 18 and i feel like i'd got a lot of opportunities early that i might not have deserved mm-hmm. um through some under 19s cricket and i did really well when i started and then i had a few pretty average years so coming down here was a great time for me to start fresh and all yeah. that was a bit different like it probably challenged me in another way like having to turn up in july august to club training in melbourne taking high balls in the cold and yeah you know nine till 11 in the indoor center when it's freezing like, yeah, yeah they were different challenges i probably was didn't have to experience before mm. um but i learned a lot from i guess going through that because you would have been like because yeah because you're going right right through the system in sydney yeah. anyway because you played aussie 19s so and you've done yeah. really well and then fuck odi player of the year for new south wales and get cut that yeah. year like because in great in the grade circles, which is the least relevant circles of any of your career, but like, what? But, <laughs> but yeah, and be careful. This is the grade cricketer, um, but like you would, you were like the big dog, and then yeah. like just moving down here, were you like you wouldn't have been like not recognised because you yeah. like played for Australia the year before, but like was it a bit like you had to prove yourself again down here a little bit? Yeah, I felt like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, even a club cricket, like I always loved playing for my club. Mm. Um, I still do, but. Yeah, it was a totally different experience, like coming down, having to prove to a bunch of people that you don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You actually are still serious about it um, and want to make a crack of it. And it was, like I said, it was probably the thing I needed at the time as well. So mm. um, it's turned out well. I ended up playing for Victoria later that year. But yeah, yeah it definitely probably changed my perspective on a few things mm. um, when I first came down. I remember we got a DM a few years ago because we interviewed you for Channel 7 maybe last summer or two years ago, whenever that was. Two, yeah. And then someone yeah. had sent a photo um of you at the SB, yeah uh wearing your ace cap yeah yeah on a, on a circuit yeah mm. that <laughs> so on the yeah, best yeah. Ever seen. i actually saw that. i was going through my um got a new phone recently so you oh, swap everything over and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. yeah. things actually, are going well obviously yeah. now so yeah. <laughs> yeah. flicking through the photos and i was like i wonder what's on here and then it uh, popped i think dan christian taking a photo of us course, together yeah. Yeah. um with me in the hat and i was like 
You're doing fine, that. Now the sun is approaching again to get him back out. But um, you've got to be careful of him taking photos. He sends a lot through to us. Because <laughs> yeah. my memory of that photo is he sent it to us on WhatsApp and he's like he's hiding behind a tree or something. Like <laughs> You're just getting a drink at the yeah. bar. Yeah, that's that's what it was, I think. He yeah. tapped me. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, can yeah. you, I mean, pe- people these days like would understand you as like I don't know if they they might categorise you as a rare bloke, like as in because you have interests outside cricket. Yeah. Uh, so that's <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. really that's rare. Yeah. Uh, so, could you maybe take us into the mindset behind? Because it might explain a little bit about your character, like um, going to the ESPY in yeah. the summer mm. with good kid on. You know, you're an Australian Test player, mm. and you're leaving your apartment or your residence, yeah. uh, and um, you go look. I'm, I'm going to wear my East's cap. East today. East today. East like, today. is yeah. it? Is it a? Up the is Dolphins. It a f- what's behind the fact? It's obviously a fashion choice, but like, what's the philosophy behind it? I like Easts. I miss it. I like the colours. The colours match mm. my clothes. <laughs> I'm just trying to be rare. Like, yeah. take take us be underneath the hood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want so the I think I was like trying to. It might have just been the process of packing up my house to move, and I came across <laughs> yeah. all my yeah. East stuff, and I was like, "Fuck, this is a great heart." Like. <laughs> <laughs> Like and it's not like the traditional <laughs> yeah. Australian bag. It looks like yeah. a train hat either. It's like the yeah. Yeah, gold the tra- cap, yeah, the yeah, English, yeah. English style yeah. cap. So yeah. I was like, oh, like a like a, a like bit a flatter, bit and a smaller brim yeah. as well, tighter. Yeah. yeah, 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 much better fit. So I, I whacked it on. I was like, oh, this is a great hat. Like, didn't yeah. really appreciate this at the time because mm. I always I usually play in the, the wide brim. Yeah, so I don't yeah. wear my baggy hat that much. So mm. I was like, oh, what a great hat. I've been neglecting this thing. Mm. Um, and then it was sitting in the spare room and. I just said I was getting ready for the ESPY, and I think I had some navy shirt on or something. He's like, oh, two would go with this. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? You? Yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and my missus dropped me at the ESPY and he's like, you're not actually wearing that. Like, this is a joke, aren't you? You're yeah. just stitching me out. I was like, no, I'm wearing it in there. Yeah. So I wore it in, and I was going to just take it off as like a bit of a piss take, and yeah. then got some good feedback. So I was like, push on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of when I went. But yeah, it was a bit of trying to be rare as well, but yeah, of course. a mixture of everything. Any um Any UK club cricket? Just, just for Surrey. Played half a season, or maybe half a quarter season. of a season. Whereabouts? Um, at Blackheath. Okay. Down in, the, I think they're in the Kent League. So okay. Um, just kind of just out of London, down that way, and then got cut short because I went to play. I think I would pick for an Aussie A two or something. So yeah, I had it with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I didn't actually get the full kind of club okay. cricket English experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, that you know, my brother had for a couple of years when he lived there, but a lot of people have, have come back raving about. Yeah, him. yeah. Because then you played. We're talking before you, you played for Surrey in the Vitality Blast, yeah. And then Owen Morgan has just come out like a couple of days ago, um, saying that like, no, nah, the hundreds fucking just way better. He didn't say that. He said hundreds already way better. Mm, may um, as well. He may, he may as well done. Uh, if you watch a hundred, a little bit, yeah. Enjoying yeah. it? Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I think he said as well that he was one of the people that kind of backed it and was a little bit surprised at some of the reactions that it got from the public and mm. actual like other cricketers. Mm. But I thought it was a great idea because at the end of the day, like it's probably going to bring a new audience to cricket. And I'd noticed it when I, like you said, I went to Surrey that yeah. year, people, 20,000 people would come to the Oval from London. Mm. They didn't care about the cricket. They mm. just want something to do and like an event. Yeah. Um. So I think, yeah, for obviously it's, a lot of it's based behind TV and getting audiences and stuff like that. But I think it's a great idea. Mate, it's so funny because my experience of like just consuming this is all the players seem to be on board with it. All the players yep. seem keen on it. Um, but just, I guess it's more the media or like yeah. people in certain sectors in the public who are like, no, nah, this is shit. But it seems to be flying already. And like, I don't know, if the players are really enjoying it mm. and they play heaps of cricket, then like this thing's got That's, legs, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think obviously it's different. It's so simple for viewers as well if you look at the scorecard yeah i think it's batsman runs and balls bowler yeah. runs and balls like that's all you need to know yeah mm. um so i think it's simplifying it a bit for people who might be new to cricket mm. or trying to target a new audience and i think it's pretty smart but it looks bloody fun and yeah, yeah players that they've had are pretty pretty high quality international players yeah. as well um yeah. and that's with a lot of guys pulling out um through not having to want to do quarantine and all that kind of stuff. So mm. it's pretty impressive. Mm. Something like the 100, Nick, like I'm, I'm conscious last week we talked to Nick Compton and he sort of, I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he was like, look, players are going to be pretty agnostic about the 100 or whatnot because players just play. Like they just, they sort of, it's not like, oh, they just go where they're told or whatever. But like if the price is right and it's going to be on TV and it's looking like the new thing, you know, players will go. Like is, it, is that, 
Is that fair to say, or like when, you know, among the player group, like do you guys robustly discuss, you know, new tournaments and like, and, and, um, the impact of the hundred on the county game, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, when you're in, when you're in the showers, uh, together, um, (laughs) is that something or, or, or is he sort of partially right that you like players will just go with whatever? Yeah. I think he's Mm. nicely right. Mm. Um, I think people probably bit scared to come out and support something like that especially in the mm. first year as well mm. so you get a lot of people that probably feel like they're just going along because it's more money and mm. stuff like that but at the end of the day like we're paid pretty well to play a game and promote the game as well so mm. if it's doing all that stuff and you can make an extra living out of it mm. and all that kind of stuff i think it's great but yeah i don't think it's something that plays around going oh no it's going to affect uh, the crowds at leicester next week <laughs> in the four day i'm like <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that discussion has really been had because it's just the way it is. So. There's no crowds yet. Yeah. Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of a smart segue, but I don't have one because I'm dumb. But um, I just want to talk about your career, like back to your career. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, just like just before you came, I was like researching you, obviously. Um, and I just had sort of forgotten, uh, I suppose, in that moment when you came back and you came into the test site for the first time, there's obviously like the Hobart game, the game before where Australia yeah. got blitzed by South Africa. And um, then like massive changes, you got picked in. Your first innings, you're facing Rabada at eight twenty nine p.m. Yeah. Um, he's got a brand new pill, and he just bowls a in swinging Yorker to you. Yeah. Like, how unfair is it that you make it? You play cricket your entire career, you make it to the top, and then that's like the tiny window you get. It's like there you go, mate, have a go at that. And yeah. it was like when the pink ball, the pink ball test was probably only like one or two years old. At that yeah, point, I think we played something. a little bit at state level, but okay. not for international cricket. Might have been the second, second yeah. one. Like how insane that whole moment was where like Australian cricket in that moment was in turmoil as we are yeah. every like five, six years. Yeah. It's like a cycle. It's like an Olympic cycle. Mm. <laughs> and then, But then you have to face Rabada with a new pill, with a new pink ball yeah. at 8.30 at night. It's yeah. like, like, how do you like, how do you reflect on that? Yeah, uh, probably a good one. Like reflecting it seems a pretty big deal. Mm. Um, at the time I was like, oh, that's just what it is. Like, right. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I never felt like I was um, harshly done by it. So like, well, that's just it. Like sure. that's what you got to do. Um, and I felt pretty lucky to be even there because I'd missed, I think, I think I played one four day that year because mm. I'd had a concussion. I came back, got 100, and then that was when they picked the team mm. after a bad loss. So I kind of felt like I was always pretty lucky, in a sense, to be there. Um, but, yeah, reflecting on it, I'm like, God, I wouldn't mind going out there in the afternoon or the next morning <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. the ball's a bit older. But yeah. um, that's just the way it is. And, like, it's, everyone says they've learned from those experiences. Um and it probably took me a little while to work out what I actually learnt, but mm. um, it probably just made me realise that I had a bit of work to do and to, to come back and how hard international cricket is. Because mm. I think when I grew up as a kid wanting to play it, and when you come through the pathway, like I said, I was pretty lucky I got through the pathway into mm. state cricket fairly young. You're just like, oh, it's going to work out. Yeah, I'll play for Australia, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then to get there and realise like I'm a bit off the pace here um, was a bit of a wake up call as well. Um, but it wasn't until yeah a couple of years later we kind of looked back and. Like, that was actually pretty tough. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, That's amazing, man. Because that, because I know you played. Then you played Pakistan, and you played two tests. And then after the MCG, yeah. then you got dropped. And then you had like a lean, like big bash season. And then yeah. you took like some time away. Yeah. Was that like? Well, I mean, you tell me. But was it a bit like I've reached the top? This is fucking really hard. And now I've got to go back to still figuring out what my game is and like a prime time big bash audience. Yeah. And still not doing that well. Now it's like, uh, what's cricket actually in my life? Yeah, it probably started a bit before, to be honest. Okay. Um, I haven't spoken about it too much, but like going through the summer and everything, like there's different times when you like playing more than others. Yeah, yeah. I think leading up to that was one of them and you're still there like 99%. But yeah. Like that extra little 1% that you're not there is the part that eats away at you over yeah, time. Yeah, and yeah. I think, um, like you said, I actually wasn't too worried about that. The first two tests, they were both pink ball. Yeah. I was annoyed. I got to the MCG batting on day two or three against Pakistan. I got 25, faced 70 balls, and then I played a pretty shit shot and got out. Mm. And that was the one to me where I was like, that's probably my chance. Like, the right. stuff before it didn't really bother me. I was mm. like, you know, cop it under lights with a new ball. That's just the way it is. Mm. But that was the one that hurt the most. Mm. Um, and then I went back and I thought, oh, this is great. I need Big Bash to freshen up. And mm. I didn't perform well either. And then I was still kind of carrying some of the emotional baggage yeah. probably from um, the test stuff. Mm. And then it got to state cricket and we flew to Melbourne. I was batting in the nets the day before and I was like, I didn't tell anyone. I just walked out, walked back to the hotel. I remember I called the coach and Moses and like, oh, I think I need the game off. And it kind of just went from there and ended up taking about a month off. Mm. Um, it came back towards the end of that Shield season and that was kind of how it ended. But um, yeah, it was a, a tricky one. But yeah, I think it needed to probably take the time off to, 
to process it all. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. And and you just mentioned before, and maybe you have explained it, but um, it sounds like you've done so much reflecting on that time now, and you, you did some reflecting at the time, and then it sounds like a few years later you did even more. So, like, you know, what – what did you learn about that time and sort of where are you at with your cricket now and your approach to cricket with everything that you've been through? Yeah. Um, I guess what changed, I probably changed a little bit about how I wanted to play because I felt like I'd just go out there, like it was all calculated and you have all the other stuff you worry about. But a lot of the time I needed great situations to do well in. Like I needed, mm. like if I did well, a lot of the time it was in my favour. Mm. So I tried to kind of formulate my game a little bit where I could, it mightn't be scoring 100 every week, but like contributing a bit more when the conditions don't suit. And it's mm-hmm. little things like that that I tinkered with um, and it's probably a bit of a mindset thing. Um, but yeah, it probably just made me realise that I wasn't good enough for international cricket and I was like, well, I better, better train a different way, better have a different approach. And that was kind of, like you said, it happened pretty quick, but then I'm off contract and I'm in Melbourne. Um, and I guess throughout that experience, it probably, probably taught me a few things about you know, having to work it out for yourself a bit. I got the ability to, to train on my own, which might sound difficult, but I, I got to do everything I wanted to do. I mm-hmm. didn't have a system. I wasn't involved in a state set up for a few months um, in between kind of the end of that year and coming to Victoria. So I could train however I wanted. I could do what I wanted. And it kind of made me realise how important the off-field side of things are as well mm-hmm. and um, making sure you're connecting with your family and friends and having that network really strong, which at the time when you're young and you start playing, you be honest you kind of that takes a bit of a back seat where mm. now i think it's the other way to me um i prioritize that stuff and i'm that person who plays cricket mm. where before it was so invested in in cricket that i probably forgot about some other things hey there was a because i was just, not, yeah, just yeah. on that note like there was a really interesting piece the other day uh in the guardian by um, english writer barney ronne about uh, and it was in response to um the the episode with Simone Biles recently in the Olympics, uh, and um, I don't know if you caught it, where she she just was like, uh, "No, I'm not, I'm not participating." Um, and he was talking about the like 24 hour rolling hell of big sport, and <laughs> uh, he used the example of Simone Biles and then Naomi Osaka, just like you know, just saying that the the pressure on sports people is growing and growing and growing it's also happening in a COVID environment but mm. you know through social media people are just, we we just expect more of our of athletes and we just uh, we want so much and we have better access to them so we give it to them all the time uh you know a, t- a day or two ago ben stokes, ben stokes pulled stokes, out yeah. of, of the ash of the ashes of the um of the england india series because of mental health issues and also his finger um you know i, I can only presume you have a much more heightened and a bigger a better understanding of what people like that have have gone through yeah mm. yeah definitely i think a lot of the time it's not just like when you use the Simone Biles thing like mm. pulling out the olympics everyone's like what are you doing but like there's so much that goes into it so mm. it could have been she might have been toughing this out for two years and just mm. the yeah. pressure of that moment is what cracked um mm. so a lot of the time it's it's stuff that's going on well before that time happens um and i think people are more open to it now like you said it is with social media, it's more accessible to you know, message players and have a crack at players and yeah. um, athletes and stuff like that. So I think um, learning how to deal with that, but then obviously people feel more comfortable in prioritising and you know, it might just mean that Ben Stokes wants some time off. Like mm. he might not actually be struggling with anything. It might just mean he wants the time off and that's okay as well. So mm. it's actually great to see people prioritising themselves as a, as a person mm. um, before just thinking – because they're like – Honestly, you do tough it out. There's times mm. where you don't always get the way you want. But um, I definitely think, yeah, it's great to see people willing to put themselves first and mm. um, to the detriment of it might be their career. But in the end of the day, they'll come back in a month and we'll forget they've even had the time off mm. and they'll, yeah. they'll prolong their mm. career. Mm. So. It's amazing. You, I reckon you must have been one of the first people, and cricketers anyway in Australia, to, yeah. to sort of speak about this. Because then, since then we've seen like Moses spoke very well about this, Glenn Maxwell's taken some time off, Ben Stokes obviously as well. And it seems to me that like the players and like people who kind of who are in it and they get it yeah. are very like sympathetic and they understand. And then it's like, you know, for fuckwits like me on Twitter just being like, yeah. ah, let's fucking get on with it, Matto. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're yeah, never like that. No. <laughs> but that's how I sound on yeah. the internet. Yeah. You know, it's like uh it's it must be a weird thing where like almost in the in the environment that you need to break out of a little bit, that's actually the support network. And then yep. when the rest of society kind of chips in when they have no idea what's going on, 
they almost like don't have a right to mm. have a pop because mm. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. and everyone's story is different. Like, sure. I think in the, within the same couple of weeks, even when I was in Victoria, I took some time off. Right. Um, myself, Maxwell, and Wolf Bukowski mm. all missed a month or more of cricket at the same time. Mm. But they were completely different. Like, yeah, so yeah. I don't think people probably have to understand that just taking time off or prioritizing your mental health doesn't mean you're depressed or it doesn't mean there's so many things that go into having good mental health. Mm. Um, and when you add sport into the equation and professional sport, it's just another layer of something that you've got to deal with. Um, mm. I definitely feel like it's, it's heading in a way where, you know, you do tough it out at times. That's mm. fine. Yeah. But I feel like people now, especially within cricket, are educated enough um, to know and see the signs um, that they, they might need to seek some help and are willing to take the time off. So I think it's great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, you were mentioning, you were talking about things being better in cricket now in relation to that kind of stuff. Um, and then, so you won't say this, but I will, but like surely there are still blokes in cricket, like in and around the system and in environments and stuff that like, and I don't mean this in relation to mental health necessarily or anything like that, but like there's still some pretty basic blokes in there, surely, who are like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, like you just might sort of, not be strong on the emotional intelligence front or whatever, or who do want you just to tough it out. And I'm not, again, not just mental health, but in, like in any situation, yeah. like, is that right? Yeah. Or, or is everybody no, in like state systems and international systems now super enlightened? Cause I, cause <laughs> I tell you what, like one of the worst things to happen to sport, I reckon are these fucking sports documentaries yeah. where like now we can yeah. look into like <laughs> yeah. the Australian yeah. cricket team or the West Tigers and yeah. be like, shit, this is all third grade. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah, like, yeah. is that, or, or, or is are things great at Victoria and New South Wales? <laughs> uh, no, you still have that for sure. I knew yeah. where that was going as soon as you. Started. <laughs> I know it was so I couldn't one. look at you. Yeah. But um, no, there's still an element of that for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's funny those like those documentaries like like Spurs for instance, and it's still like, all the money in football and stuff, and it's yeah. still just come on boys, let's work hard. Mate, it's like yeah. jo Jose Mourinho put absolute, one in early, absolute genius. Yeah. He's up there going, "You've got to be a cunt." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's what my fifth grade captain Andrew Hoppet used to say to me. <laughs> Work hard, respect the game. <laughs> it's really interesting, Matt. You're saying Love before, you hobby. but about um, he does listen. Um, about it's like quite well in mining. Actually, just shut the fuck up. He's <laughs> <laughs> quite well in mining, is he? <laughs> Sponsor the show. Um, about how like you sort of come through the system, and you just sort of figure that oh yeah, I'll play for Australia, and like because you played in the IPL for a couple of years with yep. like with RCB, and you're like opening batting with Coley, and was AB de Villiers there at the same time? Yeah. Ah, that's unbelievable. Like you and you and Coley, like walking out to bat in the IPL. This is two years. I know you. Have you already played for Australia. You played, I played white ball cricket one for Australia. T twenty, one like T twenty off. Like in I India, right? Yeah, in it was India. So yeah, rogue. Like it was in like Gujarat, so it wasn't even easy to get to. Okay. So we were like in Mumbai for a week, and then you go out played a T twenty. I was like, oh, they must be like when it's going on here. So like, oh yeah, see you later. All of a sudden, <laughs> see, I didn't even, like just one off and didn't play again for probably five years. So yeah. Um. But yeah, IPL probably helped me that. Um, I think I got what do you pretty mean? quick thirty that game oh, against yeah, right. India, and I was like, oh, I yeah. went to the IPL the next year. Yeah, um, that's all it takes. Yeah, one thirty against 130. India. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> hang on. So that. you so you hit you hit thirty for Australia against India in a T Twenty yeah. match, and I picked up. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the Aussies <laughs> sack you off, yeah. and the IPL yeah. picks you up to yeah. bat with Coley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. So oh, what's yeah. who who was right and who's wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you played in India against India, like Donny was. Was only captain. I looked at the yeah, scorecard. Yeah, was then. Yeah, Virat. Yeah. What do you and Virat talk about when you go to the crease, opening the batting for RCB? I was out there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> only played a couple of games. I think one of them I got four, and he hit me in the ass. So I didn't like. <laughs> actually, got a duck. So, um, yeah, nothing much. Like to be honest, he was like pretty chilled out about it. Was like, he the was he the big dog then yeah, already? Yeah, 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 yeah he was. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He was captain of the franchise then. Okay. And big dog. Um, yeah. Like, I think it's a different as well when it's him as opposed to like which is a lovely guy um, mm. and always approachable. But to me, I was so daunted yeah. to him because in India, like yeah. the most important person, yet someone like A.B. de Villiers, South African, pretty similar culture to what we have in Australia, mm. was easy for me. I felt more comfortable going and asking yeah, a right. question about batting than I would Coley. So, mm. um, yeah, but it was a great experience and yeah, I wish I was there longer. I wish I was still there. Yeah, sure, um, yeah, so. yeah. Did they have Mr. Nags then? Yeah, first year of that, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it made me feel a bit uncomfortable at times. <laughs> <laughs> is this is really. Are we talking to Matt about our rival character? Well, we, we've 
Well, it's not a rival character. We've we've well, had a, we've had uh, you know a running with RCB a few a few months ago. Yeah. Um, no fault of our own, I'd imagine. It was just an interview with with Dan and Kyle Jamison, and yep. was just asked to to be removed. But um, uh, yeah, it was. It's been suggested that that perhaps the IPL requires a a, a rival character called Mister Bags. <laughs> 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 it's just uh, been suggested. It's been suggested yeah. by us. Once again, a conduit yeah. <laughs> from my own brain. <laughs> <laughs> that was your brain, actually. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Don't steal my jokes. Um, all right, should we do? Should we get in a bit of Ask TGC? Ask would, would, would you stick around for Ask TGC? Yeah, Manor? I've got to. questions from the, yeah. from the audience. Yeah, Finn Serene. Yeah, is it via Patreon? Uh, boys, I'd like to discuss the topic of tubbing. Right, <laughs> <Here we go again. laughs> and a myth called the Phantom Dick Whacker which I'll get to later. I bring this to your attention in light of our very own Olympic basketball star, Aaron Baines, having to withdraw from the squad today with a neck injury acquired in the team's showers. I can't be alone in applying a grade cricketer lens to this and wonder what the fuck is going on there. Being only 21, I consider myself too young to have experienced tubbing to the level that existed in the early 2000s, and he's often referenced on the pod. I do, however, partake infrequently after a good win with the boys and a beer. 21-year-old says, I partake in frequently. Yeah. However, it seems most of the younger boys usually decline unless they're at least tipsy first. I often wonder as to whether the young men of today are too scared to tub due to the body shaming and general toxic culture of cricket clubs. As a young man in the late 90s and early 2000s, my dad used to work in coal mines as an electrician. He often regaled tales of mysterious unknown individual known as the Phantom Dick Whacker, who sounds like the resident super pig <laughs> of the job site in my opinion. It is said the phantom dick whacker used to strike in the tubs at the mine site whilst people were rubbing soap on their face and thus had their eyes closed. As such, it is alleged no one knows who this individual's identity was. However, my dad always smiles and says he believes he knew who it was but refuses to tell me who, which makes me think it was him. Especially as he doesn't work there anymore and I wouldn't know any of his former colleagues' names as I was too young. I have challenged him on this and he has always denied it but he sounds fucking guilty to me. The question is, who the fuck is the phantom dick whacker? Is it my dad? And does it does this make him the alpha or the beta of the story? Clearly, there are some fucking levels to this mysterious man. Also, why the fuck do men feel the need to get up to all sorts of mischief whilst nude with other men? Cheers, boys. Finn. Great question, Finn. Um, almost definitely was his dad. Yeah, that's definitely his dad, and mm. he's using that as a he's using that as social capital with his son. Mm. That he used to go to some hijinks, and I don't know if that's the right element to bond with your son with mm. i don't know ever come across any phantom dick whackers <laughs> no <laughs> but i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna be careful washing my face with soap in the shower <laughs> <laughs> <Not one. Hell. laughs> that's like the thing where you if you like the first time you're like home alone when we were talking about this the other day like the first time you're ever like home alone when you're like 12 13 yeah. 10 whatever you are and you're just convinced that you're about to be murdered even though yep. no one has any motive necessarily. Yeah, 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 yeah. But or then, even like, knows that you're home alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then, if you like shower, and like that's the moment when like a serial killer would attack when you've got your eyes closed. Yeah. In that moment, definitely a fear. But then there's guys just going. This guy's in a. He's not even playing cricket. He's in a fucking mine. He's working it's, at a mine site, and he's yeah. showering with everyone else. They have a shower. They have, have, a, have, they, a, tub. They tub, they have tub. a tub. boys. They're dirty. You get dirty in the mines. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I've been near one in my life. Um, but. I wonder about the psychology of becoming a phantom dick whacker. It's like you, yeah. at some point, your brain goes like, "You know, it'd be funny." Yeah. When blokes are washing their face and their eyes with soap and they can't see me, I'm going to go up to them and slap them with my penis because that'd be funny. Wait, wait, have I got this wrong? Now you're saying this guy is using his own dick to slap on other people, as opposed to whacking someone else's dick. That's what I had down. Oh, uh, okay. Is that what you had as well? I was with you. Oh, you're oh. getting your he penis. Using his own. No, I think I thought he was walking up to people and just giving someone a. Yeah, that makes more sense. Like a sack whack, sack whack, yeah, yeah, the, uh, sack whack, of a sack whack, of course. Oh right. yeah, the, 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 the classic sack whack. <laughs> well, Finn will have to clarify, <laughs> and but just ask your dad. <laughs> were you whacking them with your dick? Yeah, set him up in a or trap. Whacking someone's dick. Set him up dick. in a trap. Hey, dad, yeah. you know the phantom dick whacker, and then like send him down one of those paths and be like, oh no, no, what the phantom dick whacker did was, mm. and then thus revealing his secrets. Because if you are whacking someone with your own penis, yeah, is not the idea. If you are, yeah, if indeed if you, you are, are, yes, 
you're, you're essentially it's like uh, doing an Ask TGC where you're telling a story, but really you just want people to know your own results. That's right. You're essentially saying my penis is long enough that I can actually <laughs> it, it, like gain leverage. Off my own penis. You can get some whip on it. I can get some whippage yeah. Yeah. onto somebody's thigh or glute. What's or this? Whatever. Two nine. Yeah, all, like all that. Ten. All that sort of stuff. There was a guy at our club who just literally his penis was the main thing in his life. Yeah, that's all I wanted that to was, say that about was, that. That was his identity. Yeah. All right. Um, Sorry. No, that's all right. The tubs. They've changed though, haven't they? Oh, they've cool. changed. Do you guys have Culture cubicles change. now? We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They have cubicles. So yeah, they brought that in the UK. Every like yeah. new, it might be in Australia as well. Any like new toilet block site mm. with a shower, they have to have individual cubicles. Yeah, yeah which is probably for the best, especially considering that first question. Did you feel pressure when cubicles came in to go? Ah, like, oh, damn, cubicles! Now we can't piss on each other. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that pri- going around the WhatsApp? But, but privately, you were like, yeah. "Thank fuck, like, I can fuck have a shower yeah. in peace." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I grew up. I was sixteen. I was getting told I had to shower and. Yeah, stuff like that. But yeah, no, yeah. there was no pressure. Like, mm. didn't have to. Um, mm. But yeah, I guess it makes it no more that shit going on, is there? So but you were about to play Aussie 19, so you probably had a bit more leverage. Because if you were sort of like twos, threes, then you'd be like, yeah, got to get myself in the team somehow. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think I, I don't think I tubbed much my first no. couple of years. I was too scared. Mm. Yeah. That's had a 21st to go to, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I've got to go. Yeah. 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 Got to leave the skins on just to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Recovery on the car trip home. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry for subjecting you to the last yeah, few sorry minutes. That. Nah, that's all right. Um, but thank you very much for coming in. Nah, really appreciate right. it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sam Perry. Thanks for joining me on my show. Indeed. <laughs> and thank you out there to the listeners on the internet. Uh, see you guys next week.